detailed every path in his own hand. He wants to steer us down the straight and narrow and guide us till we reach the promised land. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. He took real those side streets of sin. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. Trucking down the highway for me. Don't go another mile without Jesus. You never know what lies around the bend. You can speak by everything but the judgment. Slow down and have a little talk with him. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. He turned around those side streets of sin. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. Trucking down the highway for me. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. He turned around those side streets of sin. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. Trucking down the highway for me. Trucking down the highway for me. Amen and good morning drivers. I hope y'all are having a blessed day today. It is February the 7th and it is 2021. <laughs> good morning. It's good to see y'all on here early this morning. Uh, I'm trying to get started a little bit earlier. We got uh, chapel service here in Jackson, Georgia this morning. And a few other things going on. So if you're around over here in Georgia, come look us up over to TA Truck Stop. Uh, we'll be over there about uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time. And uh, <clears throat> might even get my wife to play that keyboard over there. Amen. Can't never tell. She can play that thing. Uh, so I want to share something with you this morning. You know, uh, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. And uh, so <clears throat> anything that I tell you is really nothing new. Amen. But I've been talking about uh, serving the Lord and uh, <clears throat> pursuing after peace. So I want to give you some ideas. If you can see the screen, you see I have the tongue on there. So I want to give you some ideas how we can pursue peace so that we're able to uh, be a witness for the Lord, so that we're able to uh, help people come to know Christ while we're pursuing peace ourselves. Amen. Try not to stir up too much hate and discontent in the world. Uh, that's what I'm always talking to drivers about is mostly because we seem to all have an opinion. Amen. Uh, we all have an opinion about what we would uh what we would do if we was in that situation. Uh, if we was the one in control or if we was the owner of the company, if we were the president of the United States, what we would do, amen? You know what I mean? <clears throat> we all have our own ideas. But as we're sharing our ideas, we want to give God the glory and we want to pursue after peace for ourselves and our family our relationships, and most of all, we want to be able to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ with other believers. Amen. So uh, I'm going to read some scriptures over in James chapter 3. 
But before I do that, let me remind you, if you want to talk to somebody, uh, good morning, Miss Beverly. Good to see you on here this morning. If, uh, if you want to talk to somebody, call our prayer line at 1-800-248-8662. We have a chaplain waiting to talk with you, pray with you. Uh, we take prayer very seriously here at Truck Stop Ministries. Uh, we know it's the power that we have to talk to our Heavenly Father. And uh, he does talk to us through his word. So I want to encourage you to be a student of the word of God. But sometimes we just need to talk with somebody. Sometimes we need to um, maybe explain our situation to somebody and just get them to pray with us. Every once in a while, we just get to a point to where we don't even know what to pray. We don't even know uh, that the Lord's hearing our prayer. We feel that way sometimes. Amen. And so that's why we have our prayer line. So you call that prayer line if you want to talk to somebody at 1-800-248-8662. Now, let me read this scripture over Matthew. I mean, not Matthew, James chapter 3. And uh, and just give you some ideas, some uh, some food for thought here on how let me see if i can't move this a little better how about this my studio is not big enough amen uh, i want to read this to you and most of you are probably familiar with this passage of scripture but i want to give you the um uh, i want you to think about what it says about the tongue <clears throat> In, in James chapter 3, he talks about how, starts out there, verse 2, For in many things we offend all, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man or a mature man. Uh, he says the same as, as a perfect man, a mature man, and able also to bridle the whole body. So he's saying if you can, if you can control the tongue, then you, you, can just, you can accomplish a lot. Amen. And uh, the tongue will definitely get you in trouble. Things that we say, sometimes it's things that we just spout out and don't really think about. But but think about what James says here. He says, we put bits in the horse's mouth that, we, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So we've got a little bitty small bit in the mouth of a horse that may be a 1,000 pounds, and we're controlling that horse with a, uh, with this little bit. Uh, <clears throat> just think about that. He says, Behold also the ships, which, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem, whithersoever the governor listed. So in other words, if you've ever seen, you got to see a, a big ship and the little rudder back on the back, in comparison to the size of the ship, it's not very big. You know, maybe it's a couple of feet. And, uh, and it turns the ship wherever they want it to go. <clears throat> Think about that. Big old ship, a little bit of rudder in the back. And then it says, even so, verse 5, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. In other words, you can say some, some things sometimes, little things. Um, and we need to be careful about what we say. It says in the book of Proverbs, he that keepeth his mouth shut, in other words, you keep your mouth shut and you're counted for wise. In other words, you keep your mouth shut and people don't really know what you're, what you're thinking. Open your mouth and let them know. Uh, so sometimes we're better off to keep our mouth closed. Amen. Don't say those things you're thinking. So it says in verse 6 of James chapter 3, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. So he's, he's saying here that there's so many things that can come out of the words that we say, just the little things that we say. It tell, tells us over in the book of Matthew, Jesus said we would give an account. And I mentioned these things before because it's very important. We're going to give an account for the words that we say and uh, even the motives behind what we say. Uh, listen to verse eight here in, in James chapter three, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Think about that. Therewith bless we God, even the father 
and there was curse we men which are made after similitude of God. In other words, men are made, we're made in the likeness of God. And we use the tongue to curse people who are made in the image of God. It says in verse 10, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine fig? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. In other words, he's saying it's either or. And so if you want to really pursue peace in your life <clears throat> and not stir up hate and discontent, very easy way to start that process is to watch what you say. Amen. Be careful of the words that you use. And I've done a whole series of teachings on this because communication is a very big issue. Uh, communication is one of the things that gives us the most trouble as children of God, the most trouble in our relationships. Uh, most Christians, we're not necessarily struggling with uh, things that we call gross big sins, things that we would call that, like pornography or um, maybe drugs or alcohol or something. Most Christian folks that are really trying to serve the Lord, that are actually reading the Word of God and seeking Him, most of the time we, we cause our problems by the things that we say, by opening our mouth without really thinking about it. And that's why it's so important that you start your day when in prayer. You start your day... Uh, seeking the Lord, you start out by uh, seeing what God has to say about um, starting your day in prayer, starting your day in conversation with the Lord will help you to fill your, your, your spirit and let the Holy Spirit take over in a sense that what's on the inside is what's going to come out. So that's why it's important to start the day with the Lord, so that when something comes up, you don't give somebody a cussing, you give them Jesus, amen? And that's what we want to do. So <clears throat> I want to encourage you that as ambassadors for Christ, I'm sure you've, you've noticed that I have said this over and over and over, we need to be ambassadors for Christ. We are living, I believe, in biblical times. We are living in the last days. We're living in a time that's far different than anything we've ever had. You can go back and look at history and yes, you can see things, how they've different things have happened in our politics and in the world leading up to this time. But we've never lived in such a blatant disregard for the things of God, not in America. And so it's very important that we be vigilant, that we be active, not sitting on the sidelines, uh, <clears throat> just watching the world go by, go to church, have our little fellowship whenever we can get together and go home and watch the football game. No, we need to be uh, ambassadors for Christ. We need to have an awareness that we are ambassadors for Christ in everything that we do and let our light shine. One of the best ways you can let your light shine is by saying encouraging things, edifying one another, lifting each other up, not beating each other down, not spreading hate and discontent. And that's why it's so important that we we are careful about the things that we say. And so I want to encourage you that you begin to work on this. Folks, this is something that I struggle with. Uh, people that have known me for a long time or people like my dad and my children, they know I have no problem telling somebody what I think. As a lost man, I had no problem telling you my opinion. I didn't care if you liked it or not. It didn't make me any difference. I had my opinions. I was very opinionated. And I didn't mind telling you what I thought about a situation. If I hurt your feelings, oh, well, get over it. And so because of that, the Lord has constantly, since I've been born again, working on me. And, uh, you know, I, I do believe in instantaneous salvation. But he's still working on me. There's th things that God's still working on me in my life to make me more like Jesus Christ. I am not there yet. Uh <clears throat> I have a very long way to go, actually. But this is one of the things that the Lord deals with me over and over is my 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 language. Not, not I'm not talking about cussing. 
uh, the Lord delivered me from that. I thank God for that. I didn't have a problem with, uh, I got saved and I don't use the the Lord's name in vain. And, um, I don't use those four letter words anymore and all those, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things that I say that are hurtful, that have a bad attitude, uh, that are, uh, hurtful to my spouse, hurtful to, uh, my relatives and my people I'm trying to work with. And, and the Lord works on me about these things. Communication is so key. It's so important that we communicate. <clears throat> um, you know, it's kind of like, Everybody talks, but how many people really communicate? Amen. It's very important that we communicate and that we receive what each other are are saying to each other. And if we're just talking and nobody's really listening, you're not really communicating. Amen. So we want to communicate with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to communicate with our loved ones, our family, your husband, your wife, uh, it's very important, the things that we say. So I just want to encourage you that we would uh, be careful about the things that we say and how we say those things. The tongue can really get us in trouble. Uh, it can it can, it can start a fire. And I, I know before, uh, Nancy and I, we don't really uh, argue so much or, or, or uh, uh, fuss and fight. But I know there's sometimes that you get into a conversation and and you're you're you got two different opinions about how to do something or what. And then after a little while, you're like, you're way off over here talking about something that has nothing to do with what you started out talking about. And then you're like, how did we even get here? You know, we're trying to solve this problem over here. And now, conversationally speaking, we're half a mile away from that. And, and how did we get there? How does that happen? Well, it happens because we spout off little things that don't really matter, and then the other person reacts to that. I was telling uh, Miss Donna the other day here in the office, I said, sometimes I have to, because Nancy, is, she's so smart, she's different than I am, I have to, I have to tell her, I said, well, now, wait a minute. Now, now, this is what you said. Let me tell you what I heard. You know, she says something, but because of who I am, I don't receive it exactly the way that she meant for it to be. And so it's, it's very important sometimes that we back up and say, wait a minute now, uh, that's what you said, but let me tell you how I heard that. And you do that in a, in a attitude of love and respect for one another. You're not yelling and hollering at each other. So it's just very important. We want to have peace in our life. We have to pursue peace. That's what I've been talking about. Brother David got me talking about this. Yes. The other day, whenever he got on here, um, uh, Friday about talking about peace and how God gives us peace that passes understanding, but we can pursue that. Uh, we, we can pursue that peace. And so I want to encourage you to uh, pursue peace, go after peace in your life. And there's certain things that we can do. As I said yesterday, the Bible says, if you want to have friends, a man must show himself friendly. Amen. So the, there's things that we can do just like miss miss wendy just said uh if you marry you will have troubles amen that's gonna happen so what do we do to make it the best it can be well that's when we put the word of god in practice in application read the bible take it for what it says apply it to your life and see how god will bless you for it amen now, I just want to encourage you to start. If you don't do this already, if you're not already uh, seeking the Lord, you're not already reading the Word of God, and if this is an issue, man, just, just get you a concordance. There's so many things you can get on your phone now. And just start looking up things that have to do with communication and relationships, uh, language, talking. Just look up these different things in the uh, uh, words in the Bible. These verses will come up. I promise you the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. And, uh, uh, well, good morning, Miss Dan, or good evening, Miss Dan. <laughs> She's, she is in uh, uh, Australia, correct? And so she is it's over there. It's nighttime there. But it's early in the morning over here in Georgia. Uh, good to see you on here again. But let me just encourage you that you seek that peace and be careful about how you say things and how you react to things because we can – we cannot 
be an ambassador for Christ and let our light shine if we're spouting out hate and discontent all the time. And I don't know about you, but in the past, I've been guilty of hearing myself literally with my ears. I heard something I said, and I'm, that didn't uh, that didn't come out exactly right. Uh, so we have to be careful about that. So I want to encourage you, fill yourself with the Word of God and seek Him first in your day. And uh, <clears throat> seek Him so that you go about your business and uh, and you do have a good day, mate. Amen. And uh, that way you can serve the Lord throughout that entire day, give him honor and glory and in, encourage and edify others. So I, I just want to encourage you to um, truly seek the peace of the Lord. And we can start one of the ways we can do it, many ways we can do that. But one of the ways we can do that is simply being careful about the things that we say and how we say them. Amen. Don't start that little old fire. Don't get it going because it can turn into a, a raging mess. Amen. And uh, so I just want to encourage you to trust the Lord and those little things. And when you don't know exactly what to say, remember what it says in Proverbs. You, can, you, you, you look like a wise person sometimes when you just keep your mouth shut. Amen. And uh, don't let them know what you're thinking. So uh, I want to have a word of prayer with y'all, and I got a I got a song like I've been uh, last couple of days been pr- playing a song, something that my mother has done years ago. Uh, she recorded these songs probably. Gosh, my kids were small, and uh, now they're all up in their mid thirties. So, uh, so they're pretty old. They're twenty twenty five year old uh, recordings, but they still got a great message in them. And uh, so I've been playing one here and there and along the way. Uh, some of them I found one, uh, Let Jesus Heal You, Ache You, Break Your Heart. My kids like that song whenever they were little. I'll play that one day. But uh, <clears throat> let, me, let me pray for you. And again, let me ask you to call our prayer line if you need to talk with someone, if you need to pray with someone. Uh, we're here for that. I thank uh, Chaplain Joe and Miss Jan for their heart when they started this ministry matter of fact next month will be 40 years ago officially that uh, truck stop ministry began and uh, and they've always had a heart for prayer and so i want to i want to encourage you to avail yourself of the prayer line when you need to talk with somebody uh, please don't hesitate to call 1-800-248-8662 uh, you can always, like I said, you can send us an email. Go to our website and email us a uh, prayer request, and uh, we pray over those prayer requests. And uh, most of y'all know about Brother Lee. Y'all keep him in your uh, in your prayers, Lee Strabel. Uh, he is in the rehab, doing better. Uh, but I know he's ready to get out of there and get back in that old truck. Amen. So y'all keep Brother Lee in your prayers that he'll soon be out of there and uh, back shifting gears again. Uh, we love y'all and uh, Lord will and I will see y'all on here in the morning. We're going to work on some of that stuff. We was messing with uh, Friday. Uh, Miss Tracy will be back here. She is very good with the computer. So I hope we get all that little technical details lined out. Uh, we got some good things coming ahead in the future, but uh, let's go to the Lord and word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer. And Father, again, I I just thank you for the drivers, Lord, as I was listening to a a news clip, Lord, that was talking about the things going on with uh, the trucking industry and how the trucking industry, Lord, should it ever stop, would be so crippling to our uh, economy, to the things that goes on here in America. And I pray, Lord, that you keep those drivers safe, keep them vibrant, keep them going, and the trucking industry alive, Lord. And, Father, how I pray that we would have more drivers to, uh, more people to enter into the trucking industry, Lord. We need drivers. We're we're very, very short on drivers. Even though they say we have 5 million or so, Lord, we need some more, obviously. And we ask you, Lord, that you would uh, draw people into this industry, people that would love you, people that would let their light shine. Lord, as these drivers do, thank you, Lord, for their missionary hearts as they're traveling up and down the roads and different places and docks and truck stops, and uh, they let their light shine for you, Lord. Continue, please, to bless them and use them. I ask you, Lord, that you be with those that are on here with me every day, Lord, to give us wisdom and guidance and use us, Lord, uh, to bring you honor and glory. 
And Father, I pray most of all, if someone here is, is listening and they don't know that forgiveness of sin, they don't know what it's like to know that heaven is their home, Lord, I pray you draw them to you today. Help them to realize all that you've done, that they can have eternal life. Your willingness to forgive them some of their sins, Lord, that may turn to you, Father, and seek you out. And uh, just call upon your name, Father. Lord, we just love you and thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lead God and direct us today that what we do would bring your honor and glory. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And let me just say again, listen, if you need to uh, talk to somebody, uh, especially about your salvation, please don't hesitate to call 1-800-248-8662. Life is short. We don't ever know how long we're going to be here. Uh, most of you know my story. I've told you many times. My first wife was 48 years old when she went to be with the Lord, and you just never know. We don't know when that day's coming. And uh, so I want to encourage you, if you're not sure where heaven would be your home, uh, <clears throat> call our prayer line. Let's talk to a chaplain about it. 1-800-248-8662. If nothing else, at least go to the book of Romans. Get your Bible out. Go to the book of Romans. Start reading about uh, chapter 10, about verse 9. Start reading it. All you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord and trust him, accept him. Verse 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I hope and pray that you'll do that. Y'all listen to this song. My mama sings. I think you'll enjoy this. Let me see if I can get it set up. Here we go. He came from Galilee, carpenter by trade, came to build his father's church on plans they had made. His destiny was Calvary, his mission would not fail. He would build this church on a rugged cross with three old rusty nails. This church is still standing, it will never fall. Blood saved its foundation, faith put up its wall. Though the world may come against it, they will not prevail. He built this church on a rugged cross and three old rusty nails. Bricks and stones themselves alone are everything it takes To build a church that will stand so strong When this old world begins to shake Who may build his building tall But it will be so frail Compared to this church that Jesus built with three old rusty nails. I'm telling you, this church is still standing. It will never fall. Blood stained its foundation. Faith put up its wall. Though the world may come against it, they will not prevail. He built this church on a rugged cross and three old rusty nails. Oh, well, he built this church on a rugged Three 
Amen. Driver, don't forget. Look us up out there. Get her out. Go somewhere and fellowship. Worship the Lord today. And, uh, man, just give him honor and glory. We got those chapels out there because we care, because we love you, and we want to see you. And so I want to encourage you that you would, uh, if you're out on the road, look one of those chaplains up and go to a chapel service. And we've got it online. Go to our website, truckstopministries.org, and just click on the location guide. Or if you're at home, go to church, fellowship, worship the Lord uh, while we can. Amen. Love y'all out there. Y'all be safe. Be careful. See y'all in the morning. Remember, Keep that shiny side up and that rubber side down, even way over there in Australia. Amen. Y'all have a blessed day.